everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Shea Station. The Carlos Correa saga is officially over. It was a trilogy, not one that I'm in huge favor of, because in the end, Carlos Correa signs with the Minnesota Twins on a six-year, $200 million deal. I am still trying to wrap my head around this as we go for the instant raw reaction with my co-host, Jerry Blevins. Jerry, what is on your mind right now? Uh, a few things. Number one is a, is disappointment because I know how good of a ball player Carlos Correa is. Um, so I know he's going to help the team, especially this year. Uh, he could have been a, a, a really, really strong addition to a Mets lineup that needed pop. And he was going to provide that. Um, but the a, a kind of a sense of relief uh for a few reasons number one being obviously there's something going on the giants organization threw up some red flags that they didn't like and i respect everything that i've seen and been a part of with that organization from the jump and then for the same red flags to pop up in the mets physical on their own and they didn't just throw money at it they were willing to set a limit they decided that it didn't fit and carlos correa uh, had a, a better suitor, a better offer, and felt more comfortable going elsewhere. So as much as it pains me that Carlos Correa, going into age 28 season, signs for six years, he's going to be 33 at the end of this this uh, six-year run, feels like that could have been a very good fit. Um, and safe, it feels safe, it feels like a steal, but... Again, there's something going on there that, that they didn't feel comfortable with, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the fact that I have every turn in the Stevie Cohen era has led in a positive direction, and he's got my trust, man. Uh, trust in Stevie Cohen. So whatever the case may be, the people in line that are making these decisions with Billy Epler – it didn't work out. It didn't fit in their plans. Um, I'm on board. You know, I feel like the the people that are smart and in good position didn't like it. And so now I, I can, in retrospect, give me six years worth of, of uh, you know, retrospect, and I might change my tune. But uh, I trust in Stevie Cohen. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, the main thing I was saying to a couple people outside before we started recording. I mean, the front office has gained my trust because of, the, of the, a lot of the great moves that they've made. And I'll forever be curious what the physical entailed about Carlos Correa's right leg. But I, w we'd be lying if we said that we weren't sad that Correa is not going to be a Met. You know, uh, regardless of the exterior circumstances revolving around this whole dance of three weeks, the thought of Carlos Correa in a Mets uniform was extremely exciting, playing alongside Francisco Lindor like they did for Team Puerto Rico in the 2017 WBC. But at the same time, you know, now you're entering another year where the Mets kind of have the same lingering problem with their lineup. It was the first thing I said on Twitter after this happened. You're going another year where you don't really know who the bat that's going to protect Pete Alonso is. And that's been a problem since Pete Alonso has been here in 2019 and I think that he's improved as a hitter discipline wise to work around pitchers pitching around him but at the same time in a perfect world Carlos Correa behind Pete Alonso batting fifth would have been so so ideal and now the Mets have to pivot because the free agent class is thin Carlos Correa was a big fish that came off the board three weeks ago resurfaced and then immediately went off the board today there's no one really behind him that really fills that void so do the Mets pivot to a trade now? Is it going to be full trust in the youngsters like Alvarez at the righty DH or Brett Beatty at third base? He might get serious run there now without Carlos Correa. What does it mean for Eduardo Escobar, who is linked to some trade rumors and is now going to be looked at as probably a big piece of this 2023 team? A lineup in that team that's going to look very, very similar to the one that we saw last year. I think that the X factors for the team are going to be guys having to step up and those guys that performed last year sustaining that same performance. But at the end of the day, the thought of Carlos Correa as a Met was one that I grew very attached to over the past 20 days. And the fact that it's not happening is incredibly jarring. I'm sure they had good reason. But now I'm left asking, as I often am, when the Mets make moves, what's next? Yeah, um, I thought it was an, an, an it is was an inevitability that 
he was going to suit up for the Mets. I really thought it was like, all right, they're just ironing out details. That this, they both sides want this to happen, but I, I at some point somebody's going to write a book and you know, probably Martino. <laughs> uh, we'll get a we'll get a behind the scenes look. His medicals are his medicals. That that old press conference, whatever the case may be, it's going to be an interesting press conference. I'll tell you that one. I will be tuning in to him when he signs. You know, throws the the Twins jersey back on. Whatever Very the case curious. may be. Very curious. Uh, but you know, it's a big loss for the lineup. It yeah. really is. You you nailed it. Um, I actually don't think they do anything. I thought the team was complete before they did the Correa deal. Sure. Adding that would have been like a huge boon, obviously, uh, but for all the reasons you name protection of Pete Alonso, adding Pop, shoring up you know defensive third base for for the future. Um, we're basically at the same spot we were right before which yeah. is i think this is a complete team i still believe in eduardo escobar um i think he has a bounce back regression to the mean of his career um and if not then you have brett Beatty um to to kind of iron out those details and once again this this is francisco alvarez time i yeah. think um they're going to lean. Like you said, they're going to lean on these young guys a little bit more. I thought they should have been leaning into Alvarez to begin with, but we'll see. We'll see what goes on. I, I haven't been surprised. You think of – you think in what's next. I, I don't think there's anything next. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, don't think there's any big offensive upgrades coming. A big part of their philosophy has been let's protect our farm. Let's build this for the future. Let's not trade away anybody we don't need to trade away. And it's going to be dependent on how the front office feels after this. Like, were they truly confident they were getting Correa until this agreement with the Twins transpired? Or were they gearing up and prepared for the situation all along? Because I think that'll kind of tell us what road they head down next in terms of does Alvarez get the keys immediately, whether he's righty DH or catcher, to kind of be the power bat that they believe in that can protect Pete Alonso is Brett Beatty major league ready. He didn't get a ton of run at AAA before he kind of got thrust to the MLB level. A guy who did was Mark Vientos. Does he get the keys at third base and get an early call up over Beatty and Ronnie Mauricio who just won MVP uh, in the Mexican league this winter, it was raking. So, I mean, they have a lot of options for guys that haven't come up yet and can really prove themselves. But, at the same time, none of them are the surefire bet as the guy that won the World Series in 2017, and you know is due for a big payday. Yeah, man, it's there's it's it's wild. There, there's some huge question marks. Obviously, none of those answers look like Carlos Correa. No, you know, um, a guy who at the age of 27 has almost 40 WAR. You know, B war at least that Crazy. is. Uh, you know, it, it's a big, it's a big loss. But I thought this team was complete beforehand. I thought they were done. Correa added was like this. You know, white knight kind of bizarre addition that I was like, whoa! I thought this was a bunch of BS anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out it wasn't BS, but it didn't happen. Right. Um, I still believe in this team. I still believe and what what they have this is a pitching first you know rotation bullpen they've got it they've got pete alonso lindora you know in the heart of that order i could use some pop but i would like to see a bounce back from Marte. uh added pop from from mark canna when he's in there and i really do think escobar is very capable uh of being the guy to to slot in a switch hitting I was super excited about him last year. Mm. Um, he had a rough year, but he did give the fans something to cheer about at the end there. He had his whole, you know, he had a, the Eduardo Escobar game where he did everything. Um, he had some moments. I, I think he's the first crack. We'll see, man. Uh, it's it's a big loss. It's, a, it's something that's going to be a hard pill to swallow for a while, especially, you know, if he goes on to, to put up, you know, 40 and, 120 for right. the twins i um, mean that talking baseball just posted the complete timeline of the carl's korea offseason which dates back to november 7th and it's just been such a saga he opted out of that two-year deal with the twins he was he originally i almost forgot about this he agreed to a 350 million dollar contract with the giants 13 years 350 
And when you look at the scope of six years and 200 with the Twins in comparison, you know, the options help him reach 270 if he's able to fulfill all that. But I, I'm so curious what this physical said that brought his value down by $150 million for a kid who we may have not even seen the best years of yet. A guy that's already won Rookie of the Year and World Series and has put together, like you said, 40 war up until this point. What is the issue that has persisted that tanked his value to the point where he's more aligned with like, you know, I'm not saying Dansby Swanson is a bad player, but Carlos Correa, in my mind, should be making loads more than a guy like Dansby Swanson because of based on, you know, sheer talent. I'm looking at all the contract details now. I mean, the Mets were able to fully guarantee six years, but didn't match the price. Uh, Correa has incentives based on plate appearances. It's just, it's, I have never seen in any sport anything like this. The the three-month saga, the physical, the four teams involved. I've never seen anything like it. It's truly bizarre. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm going to tune into that, you know, that press conference. Must because watch. Because he's going to have to address what they found on that, on the the physical yeah like we're gonna we're, we're gonna have to hear something obviously with hipaa rules and he doesn't have to reveal anything um but it's gonna be a talking point and you know from 350 over 13 to 6 and 200 something's up like i, I something's know. up i, I don't, don't know. know what's on what's on those uh x-rays and cat scans but um it's something but again this is a future move i don't think they go out and get anybody this year i think they're looking for machado opt out next year i think they're looking at otani possibilities um yeah. i think they're looking bigger picture at free agents another another chance to run at the next crop they saw a chance to swoop in to get the cream of the crop this year and carlos correa at a young guy give him a 12-year contract um, and see where it goes. Uh, and then they didn't like what they saw. They had a chance to back out. They they took the safe route. I, I don't know if it's a safe route or not, but man, uh, I kind of feel bad for Correa. He gets $200 million. Hard to feel bad for a guy that just signed a <laughs> $200 say. million dollar deal. Um, but he really is, was the best player on the market for two straight years and is significantly shorter on the contract than all those guys. So Truly I don't know what's up. I think we'll end up getting answers, but I wish Correa good luck in Minnesota. I think Minnesota has wanted him all along. He's at a place that, that wants him. Um, the Mets are going to be just fine again. And Stevie, we trust. Um, I'm going to get that on a t-shirt. There you Stevie, go. We That's trust. a good one. Um, uh, but that, yeah, I mean, moving forward we're, we're we'll see something. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it from the standpoint of what actually got done this offseason for the Mets, you know, Verlander came in place of DeGrom, Scherzer comes back. You had Kodai Senga and Jose Quintana to fill the void of Bassett and Walker. You brought back Nimmo, you brought back Diaz, and you made some other supplemental moves along the way. So in my opinion, the team, quality-wise, in my opinion, is the same as last year. And last year, this team won 101 games. I think Mets fans realize that first, you know, after the initial raw reaction of Correa not being a Met is set in your mind because this team is still going to compete. This team is still going to be really good. We all felt this way before any Correa to Mets news happened. We were all fully prepared to compete for the NL East once again. And I think that the sourness of a three-week saga is probably going to put a little bit of a damper on that. And, you know, there's exactly what you said, an entire possibility where this is it. The Mets are done for the offseason. They're not making any other moves. And that might seem like a detriment to some people. But at the same time, this is still one of the best Mets teams we've seen in the past, you know, seven or eight years, you know, comparatively to last year as well. And like, you just have to take it a day at a time. You know, I know that's not the greatest advice. And I'm sure, you know, the Mets front office is just gearing up and trying to figure out what's the next course of action. Because, it's going to be a loaded trade deadline. It's going to be a loaded 2023 offseason. Very, very top heavy. And the Mets are top heavy competitors for every great free agent. So you have to kind of, you know, just pick it up and move on from here. It's been three weeks. I'm kind of almost relieved that it's over with, even though it didn't end the way we wanted it to. I'm just glad I don't have to check my phone every night now and wait for more Correa news because we'll it's see. done. We'll see. Yes, he, he still has to go to the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but again, yeah, I feel relief. It, it's a weird kind of, this has been a wild off season. We were texting last night and they were like, you know, just grateful to cover this team because right. of the action, the, the excitement that's around it. It's a big loss. I'm not going to pretend like right. Carlos Correa being in the lineup, being in a Mets uniform is not a big loss, but, um, it's a very good ball club. Still has some question marks, um, but they didn't just – they didn't leverage the future. Yeah. Uh, again, with I mean, a 12-year deal for, for Correa, they're going to want some answers, some, some, some stipulations, and they didn't get him, and he went to on a six-year. That is wild. What a difference. A seven-year difference in, in guaranteed money. I, uh, it's like – it's – Something's up. Something came up. It is incredible. But I, I still like this Mets team. I am shocked as anybody that he's not going to be a Met. But I, I think given the options available, uh, what they got, I think Escobar is the guy out of spring training. And there's some open battles for some bench spots. And and if somebody like Brett Beatty or Vientos decides that he's going to light the world on fire in spring training, who knows? But there's going to be some fun competition. There's going to be um, some some rolls up for grabs in spring training, which is you know always exciting to, yeah. to cover and watch. So the blue and orange babies are going to get their shot. We know that now for sure. Um, yeah. There are marquee trade guys out there. You know, we've heard Brian Reynolds in a lot of trade discussions. I don't know if that would fit at all. But regardless of all of that, the Mets have plenty of talent on this roster. We're not going to have to see the Twins too much during the season, which is, you know, I, you know, carry a lot of value in that. I don't want to watch Carlos Correa play against us. You know, it's <laughs> not like he he's going go to the Phillies. Exactly. The not in division. So take some solace yeah. in that. And I think this will this will wash over in a couple of days and, you know, it'll it'll stink pretty much until the press conference and then. Get ready for the 2023 season. It's a saga. It happened. It'll be a fun story that people say, hey, remember when the Mets had Carlos Correa for 20 days in the offseason a couple years ago? It'll be one of those things. And I'm curious to see if he stays healthy and how he performs because we could look back and say, oh, man, we could, we could have done six years guaranteed for Carlos Correa. Or we could look back and say we dodged a major bullet there. Crazy. Yeah, like uh, I was just thinking – Okay, it's still a, still the NL East. We've got um, – who is Atlanta shortstop? Is it Grissom? Does he play short? It's Vaughn Grissom or Orlando Arcia. Okay, that's not – that's fine. You know, Grissom did great. Arcia solid, but yeah. whatever. Is it, <laughs> you got, you've got Trey Turner in Philly. I mean, I'm looking more at third base. You got Alec Bohm on the Phillies. Yeah, well, I don't yeah. think he's going to play third base for the Twins. Right. He might now. Oh, yeah. That, if his leg. That's true. If his leg is, like, made of plastic. That's another thing. Whatever. Do you think he wanted to play shortstop? Do you think that was a factor? I, I, I don't. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know I either. really, like, it's I want all to answer, old, It's possible. I don't think he would have agreed to the deal initially if he wasn't comfortable switching. Right. You know, to the hot corner, so. Oh man! All right, we'll I uh, again. Now the the saga is over for the New York Mets uh, from the Carlos Correa. The, somebody on Twitter said the Korean War is ended. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can't even uh, say it was fun while it lasted because it was not it was fun. fun. It was I don't fun. think it was fun sad. at all. This was so I'm frustrating. Sad that, that, that the Mets aren't going to get this this high caliber of a player. But uh, this will be this will be a, a retrospect. This will be a hindsight look back. What what does Correa look like for the next six to twelve right. years? Um, are the Giants and Mets going to be livid with themselves over the poor choice that they make they made, or is Otani going to be in a Mets uniform yeah. and looking beautiful as always? The only okay. the only thing that makes me upset is that the most popular Shea Station episode of all time is titled Carlos Correa is a New York Met, which is tough. Well, hopefully it'll be <laughs> Carlos Correa is not a New York Met. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we can dunk on it. <laughs> Look, I still believe in this team. I still think they're very capable. Will they top 101 wins? Probably not. Um, but they're very capable of doing that. Is it improved over last year? We've got guys that are older. We got uh, we signed an older version of Verlander. Mm. Max Scherzer is another year older. Um, Carrasco is another year older. 
Starling Marte is a year older. Like we have an older team, but we're competitive. Are we deep enough? We'll find out. So yeah, it's we still will a find very, out. Very, very good team. And I'm still hyped for spring training and PPPs and all that. I was doing PPP research. Were you? As we speak. Wow. Oh, know, two lines. So let's go. It started. I Big. was looking at roster resource and all that, doing some prep work. Um, exciting stuff. Yeah, man. I've been doing some planning, too. You guys will find out about all that fun stuff soon. Um, but, yeah, Mets fans, I think maybe turn off the phone for today. Maybe don't check the Twitter feed. You know, I don't think you need all that. Uh, and then uh, we'll see you guys again very soon for an interview, right? A fun interview on Thursday. Yeah, yeah we got a fun uh, one coming up. So. Cool. We're all right, guys. Let's go Mets. Take care. Let's go Mets. Special edition. Correa. Over. Not a man.